Alrighty, everybody. Well, if all goes well, then this is going to be the very first episode of my brand new vlog talking about photography. Um, so I am on my way right now to go to a local lookout and take some pictures. Sorry for that beeping in the background. Um, yeah, we're going to see how it goes. Alright everybody, we've reached the location where we're going to try to take these photos. Now, I haven't even figured out the name for this podcast yet, or vlog, or whatever you want to call it, um, and that doesn't really matter. First, we're going to shoot some photos, um, we're going to look at how they turn out, I'm going to show you how I'm going to edit them, go through that workflow, and yeah, and then we'll talk about all of that stuff later. So let's go shoot some photos. Okay, so, got the camera set up here. It's my Canon 60D, and I'm gonna try shooting some photos on just the stock lens. Um, honestly, I don't really have a great lens for landscape photography. Um, so, I think we're just gonna see what we can kinda do with the stock lens, and I think that'll be good for a lot of the viewers at home who may not have you know, a lot of money to spend on lenses. Uh, just to kinda show that you can do a lot of work with the lens that comes with your camera. So, um, as you can see, you have this beautiful sunset going on here. Didn't really realize these power lines were here. I was kind of thinking that this spot was open, but it's actually kind of down the road, there's more of an open spot. Um, but that's in somebody's backyard, and so I, I don't think we're gonna go in their backyard today. So I'm actually really happy that we didn't miss the sunset because I was worried reading some books to my kids and I didn't think we were going to make it. But, as you can see, we made it with plenty of time to spare. So that's good. It gives me some time to kind of set up and compose my shot because that's going to be the most important, the most important thing we do right now. Um, after that, the technical details, anybody can learn that, but the, uh, the composition is something that just takes, takes a bit of practice and just kind of a good eye for that kind of thing. Um, now I wouldn't say that I have the best eye for it, but I'm going to give it a shot, you know. Um, we can kind of learn this together. So, I'll show you, I'm setting up the shot right now. Basically, as far as the, uh, the uh, technical details go, you're going to want as low of an ISO as possible. So I'm shooting on ISO 100 because we still have plenty of sunlight. Um, as the sun goes down, I might have to open that up just a little bit, but we'll see, we'll see. And then I'm going to shoot on about a 10 or 11 aperture because I don't want a real shallow depth of field. Let's see what the exposure is telling us right now. Right now it's telling us we can hit that with 160, 160th of a second. Let's take a quick snapshot and see. We're shooting directly into the sun, which is not ideal at the moment, but um, like I said, as the sun sets, I think it's gonna set up to a really nice, really nice photo. Kind of get a nice silhouette of the mountains right now. And there's that first photo. Looks pretty good, if I say so myself. I'm gonna go ahead and turn the stabilizer off on the lens, because these new Canon lenses have an automatic stabilizer built in. Um, and we don't need that when we're shooting on a tripod, which if you're shooting a landscape, you probably want to be shooting on a tripod unless you're just doing some sort of traveling and you just, you know, can't fit it in the bag, something like that. They say fortune favors the bold, right? Well, I have decided that we're going to go try to shoot another location. So not a whole lot of time because the sun is setting as we speak. But I just wasn't loving the compositions we were able to get at this lookout. So I'm gonna take us over to another spot locally. I haven't shot any photos there yet, but I think it's gonna be really nice. It's a dam, and so if we can get the water flowing over the dam, 
uh, right at sunset with kind of a long exposure, get those smooth water tones. I think that would just look really, really nice. So uh, let's go see what we can do. So on the way to the dam, I passed this other scenic lookout that I think is actually really nice. Um, so we're going to actually shoot here and maybe save the dam for a later episode. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to go ahead and get the camera set up and we'll see what you guys think. Let me know in the comments uh, if you like this spot a little bit better than the first one. I know it's hard to tell without being here, but I, re I really think that this one is a lot better. So let's see if we can get some awesome compositions uh, as the sun's going down. Maybe even get some of those long exposures like I was saying. There's some houses down there. Um, I don't know if you can see them from here. But uh, maybe, maybe they'll have some lights on. That would just look really nice, especially if we could get the reflections on the water. So let's see what happens. All right, so same advice as before. You're gonna wanna shoot with as low of an ISO as possible. Um, if you've been doing photography for any amount of time, you probably already know this. And I'm really sorry for how dark I am right now. Um, and then we're gonna slow the shutter speed down as much as we can just to get that water to look really smooth, soft, and we're gonna open up the, well, we're gonna close up the iris um, so we can get those longer exposures. So yeah, let's take some shots. I'm shooting in camera raw right now because I wanna have as much control over those, uh, those highs and lows as possible. Um, and so that's gonna give us the absolute most control. Shooting at f-stop 22. Uh, it's pretty high because I'm shooting directly into the sun right now, but that should be setting right behind those mountains here shortly. A lot of cameras now have a built-in level, so that's just what I use. Um, you can also buy a bubble level for the hot shoe mount if you, you know, if you don't have another option. If your camera is not that advanced, uh, that's okay. And you can buy something like that bubble level. I think they cost three or four dollars. Not much at all. So one more tip I have for you guys is don't forget to get creative. Um, it seems kind of obvious, but I think a lot of times we get stuck just kind of doing the same old, same old sort of things. Um, but if you just keep an eye out for everyday sort of items, you might find some new ways to get creative. Um, today at work, I found these old lenses that they were going to recycle um, from like an old telescope or something. So I said, hey, I actually want to take those home and nobody cared because they were just going to throw them away. Uh, so I took them home and you'll see in these photos, it turned kind of a kind of average shot, I would say, into something that's really fun and different and kind of pops, you know? So just another idea, maybe try it out. Now I think this might be my favorite photo of the shoot. So let's see what we can do to just make it pop a little more. I really love this little like starburst effect kind of going on over here um, from that that high f-stop there with f-stop 8 1 60th of a second ISO 152 millimeters so let's go ahead and see maybe bring a little more clarity into this now this one was shooting through a lens that I found at work that they were getting ready to throw out uh, old lens from a, like a telescope or microscope or something not really sure now you can see kind of how much how much room there is to adjust because we're actually working on a raw like this photo over here is a jpeg um, but we're working with the raw data here so we actually have a lot more room to adjust these colors the lights the shadows everything like So for any of you guys that are new, this button right here will let you select, kind of, you hover it over a color and it'll tell you what color the program is reading that as. So if you need to make any effects to that color, you know exactly which one it's reading it as. So that is looking very nice, if I say so myself. Yeah, look at that before and after, you can see lot of effect on the color there. That's the beauty of shooting raw photos. 
Um, you can always shoot JPEGs with your RAWs if you need to, but honestly, shooting RAW seems to be the best way to go. Alrighty guys, well if you've enjoyed this video, don't forget to uh, give it a like, give it a comment, let me know what you did like, what you didn't like, I can work on stuff for the next episode potentially, can I change it up, I want to do some more of this, I'm really enjoying uh, watching some other creators on YouTube and so I think it's, I think it's cool to be able to give back to the community a little bit and kind of, you know, do my part. So if you like these images, let me know, if you hated these images, let me know. Um, hopefully I'll be doing some different types of photography here in the near future because I would say landscape photography, not my strongest point. Uh, but that's why I wanted to work on it with you guys. So, hope you've enjoyed this and I'll catch you next time. Arguably the most important part about any shoot, the food. Hi, can I get a medium Oreo cheesecake shake? What else can I get for you? That'll do it. Alright, Terry, 2.37. So, I don't know what it was, but the cherry on top of that shake was one of the best cherries I've ever had. The thing was freaking amazing. I want to go back and ask for like a whole cup full of them.